Okay, we're on the last topic of the module around collaboration. And this one's called New Tools for New Ways of Working. This is a bit of a soapbox issue for me. My experience is that when we use old tools for new ways of working, those old tools can reinforce old habits and it can undermine our efforts to do things differently. One good way to test whether some of the tools or strategies we're thinking of using to collaborate or partner is to see whether using the core principles of partnering apply and whether they'll promote those principles or at least do no harm. So remembering equity because it leads to respect, transparency because it leads to trust and mutual benefit because it leads to shared leadership, shared ownership and sustainability. So have a think when you're thinking about processes or tools or strategies. Will this promote equity, transparency, mutual benefit? Or is there something I could do to adapt it so it would better promote and support those core principles? The first uh, approach that I'd like to talk through is that if we think about a new partnership or collaboration as going through a cycle where remembering it works best if someone or a couple of people share the lead role in supporting, facilitating, initiating, trying to keep a focus on the collaboration or partnership, then we think about it as a cycle where well, we know partnerships and the key stakeholders don't start from zero, and we know that taking a facilitator role doesn't start at 100%. The reality is somebody does take a bit of a lead role. But over time, our goal is to reduce dependence on that leadership role. And in this case, I've called it the partnership role. And over time, to build the capacity of the partnership or collaboration so that it becomes sustainable. And that sustainability might lead to it continuing, or it might mean that you unlock the issues to be addressed and it gets handed over to a different kind of relationship, partnership, um, or lead agency, or it may even take on a new issue. My experience with partnerships is once people experience what it's like to work collaboratively and see the results, they keep seeing new ways to work together. So this is a capacity building model and it says we might look for different activities, different expectations, different approaches at different points in this cycle. How will we know that we're at the point where the that partnership or collaboration is taking a shared leadership role. How will we know where, when there's no longer the need for one or two people to play that lead role and they can reduce that um, kind of focus on the partnership because the partnership looks after themselves. This is about the, pers the person or people taking that role. The role might continue to be played, but it might be shared by the partnership. The whole focus is about building that collective intelligence, that shared way of operating. The Impossible Institute calls it WeQ instead of IQ, and I thought it was quite clever. So it's about a range of skills and qualities required. They're not new, but in this model, in collaboration and partnering, they're incredibly highly valued and require an increased level of focus. And in fact, we get more permission to work this way. It requires an increasing level of facilitation skills, shared leadership, high level of communication, that reflection and reviewing, negotiation skills, keeping a focus on the future, 
and really looking for insights to emerge from the conversations um, and the engagements. So some examples of useful tools are things like questions, asking the right questions at the right time, and we'll talk a bit more about that. Sharing stories, encouraging people to tell stories. The evidence says that people tell more in a story than when they write or when they um, are thinking in more traditional or organised ways. Interest-based negotiations, and we'll talk a bit more about that shortly. Looking at what are we moving from and to, so people think about things in a less defensive way. Mind mapping, drawing pictures, and using some of the slides in the presentation as tools. So things like using those core principles to test how things are going or to design strategies. In Queensland, the art of hosting conversations that matter and futures thinking are again tools that bring people together to co-create a shared purpose and to look for insights to work together on. So let's talk about interest-based negotiation or win-win. It's a really important concept. It's one of the most important because mutual benefit is one of the three core principles. Having a common agenda or common shared purpose is one of the key success factors. And diversity is one of the core elements of successful, innovative, and transformational partnerships. And diversity does mean dissent and difference. So just having a, a quick look at what we mean by interest-based negotiation, win-win, mutual benefit. In this model, what people usually come to the table with is positions. So, and that's what they present. But what we're interested in is delving below the surface of those positions to what are the needs and interests that might underpin those positions. And once we can explore what those needs and interests are, then it's about how do we find the common or shared interests that we can work together on. And really pushing for a win-win, a true win-win, something that will benefit everyone. It's important to remember that compromise is usually a win a little, win a little, or a lose a little, lose a little. It's not where you get the innovation. It doesn't mean that you have to agree, agree on everything either. So in this model, not all the interests are aligned, just some of them. There are some really um, diverse examples of successful partnerships these days that you would never pick in a million years. Project Catalyst is one example where Coca-Cola World Wildlife Fund and sugarcane farmers in Queensland, believe it or not, have come together around some common and shared interests. They definitely don't agree on everything. But what happened was that World Wildlife Fund acknowledged that Coca-Cola was a huge user of water and that there was a big issue about access to sustainable water. So they actually found some things they could agree on, not agreeing on everything, to work together on. Over time, that what started as a transformational partnership looking for innovation has now moved to a sponsorship where Coca-Cola Fund, World Wildlife Fund, to work in partnership with sugarcane farmers in order to look at sustainable water use and protecting the barrier reef. And in fact, the farmers will say, you know, World Wildlife Fund, you would think, is one of our enemies. But what we've discovered is we can find some common and shared interests to work together on for the sustainability of both sugarcane farming and the Great Barrier Reef. A lot of people won't necessarily understand what their needs and interests are. So one of the things about working in collaboration and partnership is sometimes we actually have to help people 
delve below the surface. We're so used to operating in this space, we don't actually take the time to understand where people are coming from. What's, what are the things that are driving them? What are the things that are making their lives miserable? What are the things that if we work together on, it would actually make life easier for everybody? So sometimes our job, if we take that facilitation or partnership broker role, is to help people understand their needs and interests so that we can find the common ground. And it's that space where we get the gold and the innovation. The other concept I said was really powerful when we're working in collaboration is asking the right questions. And we don't actually get a lot of experience at that. Um, but we don't know what we don't know. And designing a good question is a bit like um, the grit that they plant in oyster shells in order to grow the pearl. If you ever do crossword puzzles, you know what I mean. When you're first doing the crossword puzzle, you might not get the clue immediately. But then you go away and for some reason it keeps working away in your brain and when you come back, you get the answer. A good question works like that. It kind of niggles away and it helps you gain some new insights around the issue. There's a number of different um, schools of thought about design of questions. Appreciative inquiry is one methodology that's proven to be quite effective. It works on where the energy, go, energy goes where the focus goes. So it says if we focus on what's working well, we'll get more of that. Let's build on that. So appreciative inquiry says let's actually think of a time when things worked well. What was happening? What, who was in place? What were the sorts of systems, structures, processes going on to make it work well? How could we do more of that? Strategic questioning creates movement. So the strategic questions are things that actually encourage us to think differently about things. So one of my favorite strategic questions starts with, what would it take? What would it take for us to do things differently? What would it take to get this person uh, at the table, for example? Storytelling is also quite a, a useful tool. It breaks the mold. It gets people out of their professional and expert role. It's um, incredibly powerful for equitable and respectful relationships because everybody can tell a story. And people tell more than they realize they're telling the story. And there's lots of creative ways to help people tell their stories. Here are some examples where, believe it or not, I've got about 250 bottle tops of all sorts of shapes, colors, and sizes. And people sit down and co-create either a vision of the future or the way the system is now. And they start telling quite intricate stories about things. In this one, people actually started um, drawing, creating the, the uh, red tape that wrapped people up in the current system. In this one, a group of families, individuals, um, talked about the importance of collaboration and working together and the strength of bringing people together. I've seen people who are um, dependent on services pick up bottle tops, take them off the table where people are working with them, open the door to the room and move the bottle tops outside the door and then come back and close the door. Very powerful way of talking about um, where people sit in the system. And there's no experts in bottle tops, so it actually creates a very equal playing field. Found objects, pictures, getting people to take photographs, all those sorts of strategies help people tell stories. So let's tell a new story. 
it's 2019 and you're talking to an old friend who lives in another state. They tell you that Queensland has continued to grow its amazing reputation for collaboration and partnering. What stories might you tell them about what's been achieved and how since 2014? What stories would you tell them about the hurdles that needed to be overcome? Jot your ideas down. They should give you some good clues about where to start in terms of continuing to build collaboration and partnering. Good luck with it all.